Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video we're going to be taking the wooden floor material that we uh, made in the last video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived-in feel. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the textures that we'll be using. We'll be using this floor smudges one and this gun scratches one, both of which I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll be including the links to them below the video. Now let's head over to Max. So this is our material from last time. Um, as you'll remember, uh, we brought in the material using the material converter um, and we did make some minor adjustments to our gloss map here um, to give us more control over the the amount that the gloss map affects our finished material. But other than that, the, the converter did the rest of the work for us. Um, before we start messing with nodes though, I'm just gonna go over exactly what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective and the brighter areas are less shiny um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, that'll, that'll be the reflections would be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so let's get down to the fun part. The first part we're going to be adjusting, obviously, is the gloss map. Um, so let's start by bringing in our smudges overlay texture. Okay, so right mouse button anywhere on the uh, node view here, then go to maps, general, and bitmap, and then uh, obviously you need to find where it is you've put the uh, the smudges texture on your hard drive. I've already got it selected here, and I'm going to select the 16-bit variation. 16-bit um, offers uh, a greater depth of color, uh, and in the case of a, an overlay like this, it, it, it just gives us more detail to work with, and, and you can get better results using it. Um, but before hitting open, I'm going to go to override. Um, this is just to make sure that the uh, gamma corrections that can be applied won't affect this texture. As a general rule, it's the materials or the texture, sorry, that influence color that we would want the gamma corrections to be applied to. A texture like this, which doesn't influence color, we want to get the raw data. We don't want V-Ray affecting this texture at all. We want the texture exactly as it is. So. Just click on the override button there and then click open. Right. Now, a little technique for working with maps like this. I'll show you now if my computer wakes up. Here we go. <laughs> um, let's bring in a V-Ray light material. And then we'll just make sure that the floor plane is selected. There we go. And I'm going to assign this material to our floor plane. And you'll see here in the, in the viewport the uh, our material is gone and our floor is now just a blank emission plane yeah and if I feed the map into it we'll get to preview that map how it will appear on the floor uh, which is, allows us to get the scaling right and and uh, and stuff like that so if I double click on the bitmap I'm going to adjust the tiling here a little bit because the, the footprints are a little small compared to the size of the floorboards unless it's been a lot of small children running about, um, <laughs> we'd expect those to be a little bit bigger. So let's change those to 0.7, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that should work nicely. And I'm also gonna slightly adjust the offset because I wanna make sure there's a nice clump of, uh, of footprints in this area because I know that the light's gonna be really reflecting off that part hard um, and it'll be a good way to test that we've got it set up correctly. So the next step is to use this map to influence our overall gloss map. Now, just as a reminder from last time, the way we've done this, these three nodes here, this adjustment, is this is a gloss map, but we've told it to invert the uh, the, the color data so it becomes a roughness map, yeah? Um, because roughness is, in a lot of cases, easier to work with, like I've been able to use a, a multiply node here to edit or alter the amount of effect it has on our finished material 
um, and then we've got this second color correction node which is inverting it back into a gloss map and then feeding it into the shader because it's a gloss map that the shader is expecting. So what we're going to do is affect the parts between this, yeah? So where this is, this roughness map, that's what we're going to be adjusting. So let's create a little bit of room, like so. And then we'll add in a V-Ray, no, a general uh, composite, there we go, <laughs> a composite node. Now this allows us to, to blend two textures together in a variety of different ways. So if I double click on that, click on this uh, little new layer button here, this gives us two layers to work with, and what we want to do is feed in our roughness map, which is what it is at this point anyway, into layer one, and then our smudges into layer two. Now if we feed this into our little emission shader here, you'll see V-Ray will update, but you'll see no difference, and that's fine, that's, that's what we'd expect at this point. By default, the composite uses the normal mix type, where basically if the opacity of layer two is at 100, it will completely replace layer one, which is why we're not seeing our original map at all. If I lower this down to zero, we then see our, our original gloss map, or roughness map at this stage. But we want to leave that on 100 and instead change the mix type to screen. Now what screen does is take the bright areas from layer two and add them uh, to what, whatever is in layer one. So we're getting the, the smudges and the footprints on top of the roughness map that we've already got. Now, with a roughness map, the darker areas are the the shiny, reflective parts, and the white areas are more diffuse and smooth. Yeah. Um, so, in the case of this particular uh, material, the smudges on the floor will be less reflective, which is exactly the way smudges on a real floor uh, act or, or look. So that that works perfectly for us. Now what we do want to probably do is bring down the strength a bit. We need more control over the the the, the smudges themselves. But we'll do that in a moment. First I want to I want to actually see this on our material. So we'll feed this composite node that's now done. We, we, we've done a job there and feed it into this invert node to turn it back into a finished gloss map which V-Ray will uh, understand. And then if we assign this to our plane here we go. And now, as the, the image clears up a little bit, you'll see the, the floor smudges on, on our material. And it's, it's looking pretty good, but a little bit too strong. So let's look to adjust that. One thing I am going to do is change the names here, just to keep track of what we're doing. So we'll call this smudges and also this, just so we can see where the, or what the different nodes are doing. Now, to give us some more control over the smudges map, we're going to do exactly what we did with our inverted gloss map here and put in a multiply node. So I'll go to maps, general, RGB, multiply, and drop that in there. And then we just feed in the smudges to color one and put the output into layer two. And now with this smudges node, well, I'm going to call it a smudges node, <laughs> um, we have more control. So with the color two, uh, the, the white box here because we've got no map in it it will just take the color that's from here we click on that and lower it down to about the halfway mark to give us a more subtle effect we don't want our floor to look dirty and grimy just 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 that slight hint of, of actual use like you would have in the real world and I think that value should be just about okay maybe a little higher yeah yeah that should work well for us Right, so the next stage is to, I'm just gonna zoom these nodes out a little bit, um, and disconnect that for now, and then I'm gonna grab all these nodes relating to the gloss map and just drag them down a bit to give us some more room to work with, because the next part of the material we're going to affect is the normal map, the uh, the, the bump mapping. We're gonna use the scratches to give that the, the artificial uh, impression that there are scratches in the floor uh, via this normal map. Now, in V-Ray, there's actually a really handy feature. In a lot of other renderers, this would take a, a few more steps, but um, in, in V-Ray, the normal map node that we've already got in place has an input for a bump map, so it actually makes the process really simple. We just right mouse button, go to Maps, General, and then Bitmap. And then if I just find my gun scratches, where are they? No, gun scratches. Thank you. <laughs> um, and again we have a bunch to choose from 
The one I'll be using again is the Overlay 16. And I shouldn't have done that because I forgot to tell it to override the gamma correction because we want, as I said in the previous texture, we want the raw data from this one. So there we go. And now if I do the same as I did before and feed this into our emission uh, shader here and assign that, we can see how the scratches will look on our floor. And uh, like in the, in the uh, last example, the scaling's a little bit off. So let's call that scratches. And in this case, we want the tiling to go up rather than down. We want more scratches, more smaller scratches. Um, and I think a value of about 2.5 should work well for us. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, and again, I'm just gonna offset it a little bit. Just wanna make sure there's a nice clump of scratches in this kind of area. Uh, yeah, yeah, that should work. Okay, so with the tiling sorted, let's feed our scratches into our bump map. Now, I'm not going to feed the normal into the light because I don't think that will give us the results we're after, really. It's kind of kind of difficult to see exactly what it's, what, what's going on. So in this case, we'll just reassign our main material to the floor, and we can now delete this emission plane because it's not going to be any, or this, sorry, this emission material, because it, it will no longer be of any use to us. Right, so we have our scratches, and it's actually a good example here of um, the direction that the bump is going. Uh, typically with a, 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 a bump map, um, the well, not always, sorry, with a bump map, the brighter areas will bump out of the uh, material and the darker areas will bump in, yeah? So these scratches are bumping out, um, which doesn't look right. You can, you can uh, especially see it here, that one's so big, it's almost causing a bit of a shadow, yeah? So we need to tell V-Ray to that we want these scratches to cut into the floor rather than bump out of them. And the easiest way to do that is to we could we could just invert the bump map, but if you just set this to um, a negative one, yeah, there we go. Now you can see if we look at that same scratch we did before, it's now not causing a shadow, um, so it's e easy to see that it's it's cutting into the floor. So it's a negative value that we want, and, and we can basically control the bump strength directly from here. So if I go for a negative 0 0.05, that should be a much more subtle effect. Possibly too subtle, I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll leave it at that, and what I'll do is I'll run a final render, um, pause the recording, and then we'll take a proper look at it. Okay, so there's our finished render. Um, and yes, the scratches are still a little bit on the strong side. I think a, a negative 0 0.02 would probably uh, probably do the trick. Um, the smudges look just about okay. I might, I might bring those down just a little bit further, uh, possibly alter the tiling a little more on the scratches as well. But, but certainly for the purpose of a tutorial, I think we've done an okay job. Uh, yeah, good render. So in summary, we've taken our original wooden floor material and we've added in our surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in look.